And welcome to the Revelation Podcast. I'm your host of it, John Borman. And I want to say to everyone that's been listening or will listen to this, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any podcast for the next two weeks. So if you have not heard from me, I would like to go ahead and again say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. New Year. The Spirit has led me to this message today, and it's very simple. It comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And if you have been a seasoned born again, you may already know this by heart. In fact, this verse probably is one of the first few verses that you memorized on is such a simple verse and at the same time it's very wonderful to all of us romans chapter 6 verse 23 says for the wages of sin is death thank god that verse does not end there because the rest of it goes like this but The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let me go ahead and read it again as a whole. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today's message on the podcast is called The Greatest Gift of of all. Now, probably it's fair to say that this title has been used quite a bit over a period of time. And yet it is true. It is so true that Romans chapter 6 verse 23 is a special revelation. It's special because it reveals the greatest gift of all. Before we talk about that gift, we have to look at the first sentence. It's so important. I mean, when we look at the word gift in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, we might get so excited and speed past through the first sentence. We should not overlook that. We need to slow down. In fact, we have to act like there's a stop sign before Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You know, when you are at a stop sign or at a red light, you know, you have a tendency to look ahead, to look left and right, to be sure that it is clear to go. You would even do that if you're the first car and the light goes from red to green you'll go ahead and make a quick look to make sure that it is clear to go you want to make sure that you're not missing any important details such as cars coming by that's trying to run a red light so that's the pros the romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death. I think it's fair to say that in the 21st century that we understand the concept of wages. The idea can be used in our work. We work for a certain amount of time because we agree that we will do that in return that the company will give us this certain amount based upon the time and talents that we have given to a company. In order to justify our times and talents, a company will give our wages. It will give what we are worthy of to equal what we have done. Wages could also carry over into a court. A court with a jury may find the defendant guilty. Now, in order for that, def- I mean, In order for that person to justify its guilt, it has to do something. It has to give up something, such as time 
or maybe even its lie to satisfy what it has done because it is guilty. So what kind of wages is Romans chapter 6 verse 23 is talking about? Well, after that, for the wages of sin. Sin. In another passage of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned. Since Adam, everyone has been guilty of sin except for Jesus. Jesus was God. He is the Son of God. He came down in a sea by the power of the Holy Spirit and came down the line of Abraham to David. He came along the Judah line just like it was prophesied. He was that perfect seed who knew no sin. Throughout the New Testament, testified that Jesus was God and he was holy because he knew no sin. He became that perfect sacrifice. You know, in the Old Testament, people had sacrificed animals to pay atonement for their sins. Well, Jesus became that perfect sacrifice, so they, or we, no longer have to offer sacrifice to atone for our sins. We have all sinned. And the only way to justify sin is death. That's why it says, For the wages of sin is death. After Adam disobeyed, he brought sin and death into this world. Eventually, Adam died a physical death 900 years later. After he sinned, there was an animal sacrifice to atone for his sins. And since that, the Old Testament time, animal sacrifice was a way to atone for sins. That kept going until Christ came. When Christ died for us and took our place, his blood paid for our sins. His blood satisfied the wages of death. See what I mean? See why it's so important for us to slow down and look at the first sentence in Romans chapter 6, verse 23? For the wages of sin is death. At the beginning of this, I said, thank God that Romans chapter 6, verse 23 did not end there. Because the conjunction but connects the first sentence with the second sentence. And the second sentence says this. The gift of God is Christ Jesus. God offered his son to take our place so that we may have eternal life. This gift is as it says it is. It was given to us. God willingly gave up his only son, Jesus, so that we did not have to die for our sins and that we may have eternal life. If you flip forward to Romans chapter 10, it explains salvation even more so. You know, salvation is just not set for a certain kind of people. It's not set for a certain kind of nation. Even though the Israelites was the chosen nation to receive the gift of salvation first, eventually that passed on on to the Gentiles. And we see that in Romans chapter 10 in verse 11 
It says this, For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same war over all is rich to all who call upon him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All includes everyone, includes you and I. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is because whomever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, the great thing about the greatest gift of all that is not like a Christmas present or a birthday present. Those things you receive at a certain time of the year. Well, the greatest gift of all is not restricted to a certain time of the year. You could call upon the name of the Lord wherever you are at, And it goes on in Romans chapter 10, verses 9, says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus is faithful. It is who he is. If you believe in your heart and confess his name with your mouth, then you can be saved. You can receive the gift of salvation. Now, it is not a gift that is based upon works. No one can never earn the gift. Else, It will no longer be a gift. It would be kind of like a wages. However, The law says that we are all guilty of sin. James points out that if you just break one commandment of the law, you are guilty as if breaking all of the Ten Commandments. And Jesus says that if you have hatred in your heart, that makes you a murderer. If you committed a lust with your eyes, then you have committed adultery. And we are all guilty of that because we have a sin nature. No one can boast, as it says in Ephesians. No one can boast of their works. We receive the gift of God by the richness of his mercy and grace. Therefore, the greatest gift of all is Jesus our Lord. That's why we can easily remember Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through his son, Jesus. Amen.